The Mixed Mornings and More podcast with Steph and Sean. Now available daily. Good morning, world. Hey, good morning. Happy Tuesday. It's January 3rd. The year is 2023. And it's 532 right now. This is our first show of a brand new year. Yeah. I'm I feel excited. like we gotta like uh, make it a great one. Make it like start the year off right. Start the year off running. Wow, if it if it was the second day of a new year, you wouldn't want it to be great, Steph? Is that what you're saying? No, I want it to be great I'm every kidding, single I'm day. Kidding, I'm just I'm trying to kidding. set us a precedence for the year. <laughs> <laughs> um, speaking of precedences for the year, your resolution was to um, shave your beard into yeah. a towel and actually take care of the towel Clean afterwards. it up right away, essentially, instead of just let it sit there. And how's it going so far? Day three into the new year? I have not touched my days? beard. have not shaved it in the new year. Oh, okay. Maybe so. maybe closer to the weekend I'll I'll touch it. But, uh, yeah, I'll keep you updated. Well, it sounds like that's like a 10 out of 10 success for a resolution so far. <laughs> if you, you, I mean, you haven't touched if your I beard yet, but you haven't I'm left. zero for zero, so. Yeah. Woo. There we you, go. Have you ate your freezer? Okay. I did on the 31st. I had a bel- delicious well, uh, pork tenderloin ready to you're go. You're also zero for zero then. Yeah. I ate that pulled pork on New Year's Eve, and I've been eating it for a couple days. So today, though... <laughs> The intention is to take something out of my freezer and have it for dinner, and it's going strong. No so more far. leftovers. Back to the freezer yeah. again. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Giving a huge shout out to my iPhone come Sunday evening. I want to say around eight o'clock at night. Uh huh. It was reminding me for the first time in forever that the next day was a stat for me. For the first time in forever. Yes. Was it that it was a stat the next day or reminding you, <laughs> it's the first time in forever that it reminded you that it was? Uh, a little bit of both. A little okay. bit of both. Let me bring up the screenshot here to see wh- exactly what it said. It said, so my alarm app, of all things, uh, showed up. It wasn't like my calendar or anything. It just said, New Year's Day observed, found in holidays calendar. My, sure. Yes, my alarm as well reminded me. It was like, are you sure that this set alarm that you have every single day yeah. should go off tomorrow morning and wake you up at an ungodly hour? <laughs> yeah, I was like, please don't wake me up at three in the morning. I don't want that. So instantly I went to go turn it off. But wow. uh, I, I can't be satisfied with everything these days. So I just have a little suggestion <laughs> oh, towards the alarms app. Just tell me to put it back on. For Monday, so I wake up to come to work today. I did at like 10 o'clock last night, so you're welcome for being here. <laughs> oh, thanks. Because <laughs> I almost did not remember to turn my alarm back on. I feel like I need to say you're welcome for me being here as well, because on Sunday when it said, would you like to turn your alarm off? I was like, absolutely not, because I'm not going to remember to turn it back on for Tuesday morning. So therefore, I will allow my phone to wake me up at four and just press stop. (laughs) You you didn't do that, though, right? Oh, I did. Yeah, I woke up at four and pressed stop alarm and then just kind of rolled over and went back to sleep. You have other people sleeping around you. I don't. (laughs) You are disturbing the lives of other people when you don't have to. I'm pretty positive that my husband just kind of goes back to sleep as well. Like, it's been years. That is so that... rude. <laughs> no. I assume he just goes back. Yeah, he could have never woken up in the first place. <laughs> okay, okay. Just don't tell him that my phone reminded wow. me, all right? Let's keep it our little secret. Wow. <laughs> I think I must be a very conservative dishwasher loader. It seems that I wash a lot more things by hand than most. Mm, Okay. Yeah. What are you noticing? What's happening? So I have a friend staying with me and she mentioned her first night there. She was helping me clean up the kitchen and she said, oh, uh, do you care if I put stuff in your dishwasher? I know people are really particular. And I was like, girl, you're helping me. Please feel free. Fill that dishwasher right up. Yeah. Thanks, Thanks for standing up. And then over the last week that she's been here, I have found the most random things in my dishwasher that I would never consider putting in there. What are you talking about? Like everything goes in there. What would you not put in there? I never put pots and pans in there. I oh, always those wash those worst. by hand. 100% those are going on. I don't want to wash those. I just feel like they take up so much space. I could fit four plates or one pot. And then it has the handle that's always being constricting. See, this is how I look at it. It takes up so much space, but that's just a lot of things that you would have to clean yourself. Yeah, but the thing is, too, you kind of have to wash it beforehand because there's all stuck on stuff from being a pot. So 
what's the point? You're well, you give it a rinse, anyway. and then the dishwasher and the soap does the rest. You got to put faith in your dishwasher. I have zero the faith in my dishwasher. My my dishwasher is a sanitizer. <laughs> I am so bad at, a, at trusting the dishwasher no. to get anything stuck on. See, I, I'm the other way around. I'll I'll do I'll do a rinse and everything. I'll put it in there, and then if it comes out dirty, then I'll put oh, in the work. Okay. Why do the work beforehand? Work smarter, not harder. But is it not more hard work? to have the dishwasher wash it, bake the stuff on further, and then have to wash it again afterwards. Bake it on? I've never had that before. If anything, it's just like all the hot water and the soap hits it, and then it comes out afterwards, and is there something? Okay, then I'll put in a little bit of elbow grease. No, because it's so hard. I don't know. <laughs> but we've, we've cooked some different things then. We must. We must. But she also puts in like mixing bowls, like if you're eating out of like a popcorn bowl or something, giant bowl, she puts that in there. Okay, interesting. Yeah, I I can't I can't fathom. I mean, I've never done it, but I would. Spatulas. Yeah, hundred percent. Knives. Yes. Really. Yes. Never. I'd never put a knife in the dishwasher, <laughs> mainly because I don't want to get cut when I'm taking it out. But <laughs> just look what you're grabbing. Yeah. I sometimes mean. you don't always turn on the light. Like, <laughs> it's not pitch black. I just mean, like, when the day is You're turning. You're just blindly going in. You're like, oh, no, I'm putting any knives in here because no. I'm going palms down right now. When the day is turning from daylight to night, sometimes you don't realize it gets dark so fast. You might put your hand in there to grab some silverware, and all of a sudden you don't have a finger anymore, I'm, Sean. I'm team friend. I'm throwing everything in there. We have a very exciting contest coming up starting next Monday. Yeah, the 9th, January 9th. You're going to want to be paying attention not only all throughout the day, but specifically around 820 and 320 because we're doing a keyword giveaway type of contest. Yeah, so you get that keyword, you text it in, you are entered to win. Such a great prize. We've teamed up with the Fort McMurray International Airport as well as Hacienda del Sol. And uh, we're sending somebody to Tucson. There we go. We got a Tucson contest going on right here. So one lucky listener. They're going to be flying for a winter warm-up, essentially, is what we're giving you. Because you get two flights there and back. $200 in <laughs> YMM bucks, courtesy of the Fort McMurray International Airport. You get a two-night hotel stay in one room. Two of you, I'm assuming, are going to stay in there. $100 dining credit, a spa service at $165, and you're just going to have a whole bunch of fun while you're down there. Yeah, it's going to be so awesome. So make sure you're listening Monday to Friday next week and the following week, Monday to Thursday, around 8.20 and 3.20 for the keyword to enter to win. Oh, yeah. Another main thing about this is when we do do that giveaway at the very end of it, you have to answer your phone when we call you to tell you that you win or else we're moving on to the next person. So just a nice little heads up right there. That would just be the most disappointing thing about the winter <laughs> if you didn't answer your phone and you could have been going to warm up in Tucson. So, yeah, <laughs> keep that in mind. <laughs> I've been taking in Jack Ryan TV show on Amazon Prime that I've just been hyping up to everyone. And so we're in uh, the third season. There's three seasons out. That's what I'm watching right now. And I have just discovered when watching a season where they're doing, where he's saving the world. It's like secret agent type of stuff, Steph. Uh -huh. He's saving the world. In season one, he's in like Syria. Season two, he's in Venezuela. Season three, he's in Russia. And they go to all these different places. Another part of me comes out where I'm just a giant map nerd. <laughs> okay. And I've talked about this a lot before, but essentially, and I'm such a visual learner as well in the sense where, okay, they're in Syria and then all of a sudden they drop down into like this one part of Syria. And, and usually, usually it's just like when they cut scene and they're in a new spot, it's like here, here, and they're here at this time or whatever. Yeah, and they just like write it across the bottom of the screen. Correct. Okay. Yeah, and I have to bring out my Maps app. You're kidding. And I have to look up the place to A, see if it's real, if I've never heard of it, and B, so I can get a visual of where they are. So you're the person when the creators don't put the nice little map, you know, like when an airplane goes on and they show you that they where they've gone, you're like, I still need to know. I need to know. I don't know. I I don't know why. I'm just such a visual learner like that. And so this like most recent season, they're hopping all around from like Russia to Europe to different parts of Europe, this that way and whatnot. And I've noticed that they just started using fake cities and fake oh, towns. No. <laughs> but I think the reason why they are is because like a lot of bad things 
things are happening there. Maybe they just don't want that to like put that negative like yeah. connotation onto like a real place type of thing. Like one of the one of the scenes has to deal with like a lot of radiation and stuff, and obviously with Russia and like Chernobyl and all the bad things that happen. I'm thinking maybe they used a fake spot so they didn't like cause fear in a real place. Yeah, that makes essentially. Sense. I don't know. That's just me assuming. But yeah, I went to the go look it up. Like, oh, interesting. Let's look up this Makoska place or whatever. It wasn't real. I'm like, mm. Mm. okay, making up fake things here. But then, like, they're going back and forth to like Czechia and they're going to Prague, and that's an obvious one. I would assume. Uh, and so I was like, okay, I already know of that. But then they went to this place in Finland that I've never heard of because I think the only place in Finland is like Helsinki. Yeah, I wouldn't even have remembered that that was in Finland. <laughs> Capital over in Finland. But then they went to this other place. And then so like they're always hopping around in this third season. So I'm just constantly, I've had to like pause at times. You're like, kidding. A lot of things are happening and I'm just like, pause i need to see if this place is real bring up my maps app just like fingers zooming in i'm like okay and then i get lost in maps and then i'm just like what's near here and then i'm just like looking around like wait i'm watching a tv show i need to get back to like what i'm doing right now yeah that street view is totally your favorite you're like i'd like to go and see if i'd like to go to this bodega yeah <laughs> and the place is just like it looks so nice and they attract me a little bit so i'm just like oh that does look really nice and i have to remember Nerd. I'm watching a TV show at the same time. I was like, okay, write this down somewhere. Go look at it later. Let's finish this show. Nerd. <laughs> <laughs> Can't escape the Instagram ads. They're like every second post. Somebody wants you to get something. And I might have gotten a little sucked into a couple of them. Okay. What, what, what's drawing you in lately? Well, they're absolutely playing to the New Year's resolution, fresh start kind of experience. Oh, yeah. So there was this app called the Productivity App. What does it do? Uh, it just like helps you be more productive. It helps you start your habits better. Um, it is like, did you do 30 minutes of workout today? Yes, you get to swipe right on it and <laughs> check it off. And did you eat healthy today? Yes, I swipe right on that. Oh, too. I love a good checklist. Yeah. I like a physical one, though. Oh, well, this one's this one's a swipe writer. Yeah. And then you can swipe left. That doesn't give me the same dopamine as like writing out and like checking it off or crossing it off. Balance. For some reason, just writing a physical list and checking something off physically, I'm like, oh, yeah. Do you sometimes write things physically on your list that you know are going to take you about 30 seconds to do just 100%. so you can check them off? Yeah. Oh, it, it, it's like the it's like building success type of thing. Yeah. Or like when you're like, I absolutely will always do the dishes every day. <laughs> so I'll just put this on my list just oh, yes. so I can check it off. I can yes. swipe right. <laughs> um, so I got that app. <laughs> <laughs> Then there's another app called the Elevate app. Okay. It's advertising to me that I can improve my vocabulary and speed of conversation. Oh, cool. And I was like, I'm always game to learn a new word definition. Yes. Level up that lexicon. That's cool. And uh, I, I think we already talk pretty fast, but we could talk faster, Sean. <laughs> So I got this Elevate app, played three games to speed up my <laughs> brain function. <laughs> All right. We can <laughs> monitor this throughout the month but if you keep on playing. Yeah. Let's see if my New Year's resolution to stick with it sticks. <laughs> I'm coming up with a new rule, and we just need everyone to abide by it, okay? <laughs> okay. And not to get carried away with it. But the new rule is that if someone has the snow build up, the snow boogers, whatever you want to call it, in the wheel wells? The oh snow, my what do you gosh. call it? I don't call it snow boogers. Like, I literally was picturing, like, a frosty mustache. Uh, <laughs> the buildup, I don't know. The snow boogers. Yeah, I just call it ice on the mud flaps, but okay. okay. Yeah. <laughs> Let's all abide and come together that if you see a juicy one, that you can just go kick it, even if it's not your vehicle. You got to respect the vehicle. But you can kick it. Okay. A juicy snow booger. Oh. You can get rid of that no matter whose it is. Yeah. Have you ever had the urge of just walking by someone's vehicle? You're like, wow, that's ready to come off. And I just want to like make it happen. Yes, definitely. <laughs> Especially in the warm weather. Usually, though, I'm wearing shoes that I've walked very carefully around the slush oh. not to ruin. So I, I always refrain. Okay. But I wish for the satisfaction of doing it. Yeah, usually I'm tr I'm trotting around in my steel toe, like big boots type of thing, and so I walk by one and I'm just like, I got steel toes on. I don't care how frozen that is. Like this ain't gonna hurt me, and I want to kick that real bad. <laughs> it is interesting in this mild weather, oh. just the 
snow boogers that have been left behind in parking spots. Like, I am amazed at what is just hanging out, what's just not, no longer attached yeah. to cars. And I don't know if somebody kicked it off or, or if it just fell off because it's been so wonderfully mild. Well, yeah, yeah. And you'll be driving around in parking lots or wherever and, like, maybe someone turns the wheel a slight way and then the mm. wheel, like, knocks it off because of the buildup has been so much. And then there's just landmines everywhere, just chunks of giant snow everywhere. I'm like, oh, this could have been avoided if we all just abide together, respect each other vehicles, and do a little hada hada hada, how are you? And <laughs> kick it off. All right. I'm on board with your your new rule, Sean. I, I'm a I will be your first follower in this. <laughs> all right. So I'll try on your vehicle first and we'll see how it works. Please do. Okay. Sean, I think I might owe you an apology. Ooh, about what? What happened? What I don't even know. What I don't even I don't even know if I did want an apology. What happened? Yeah, well I mean I make fun of you every day, but a couple weeks ago I was <laughs> I was pretty mean. Uh, you were talking about your internet going out. Oh, yeah. I remember that day, and I just I, I just went to bed early. Yeah, you were like, I'm just going to pop some metal- melatonin and go to sleep because there's nothing else I could possibly do. And you admitted that you actually don't own any books. Yeah. And I was like, who is this man that yeah. I spend time with yeah. every day? No, I remember that day. Um, Sunday night, my internet was doing, doing the way of the Sean. Where it was just like your your TV services, your phone, no matter what was connected, nothing was going? Yeah, it was just very spotty. Basically, we were watching the movie Remember the Titans, and it was as if there was on a five-minute timer to kick the internet out. No, I don't like that. And I was getting very agitated. I was growling a little bit at the TV. (laughs) Like, I was like, oh, come on. Um, And one would think that the solutions I came up for you to do... Yeah. Uh, would have came to mind, like, oh, just turning off the TV and perhaps reading a book. I think you or, were like, you said cleaning. Did you go clean? I did not. I did not clean. I did not read a book. I did not play a game. I did not just decide to ha- enjoy some conversation. I, what did you do? I just sat on the couch and growled at it every five minutes. <laughs> As and, it buffered every five minutes? Yeah, and then it would come back on. I'd enjoy, get back into Remember the Titans, be like, man, this soundtrack's good. Know pretty much every line, enjoyed that, and then, <laughs> oh, there it went again. <laughs> so I, I feel like I owe you an apology because I did not take my own advice. Uh-huh. I made fun of you. I'm sorry, Sean. Yeah, now that you're in the tough situation, hey, it's not so easy. Not so easy, apparently. I will recommend one thing since now we've both been through it. Yeah. Pop some melatonin and go to bed. <laughs> no. You'll feel a lot better the next day. A good sleep's good for you. <laughs> we are witnessing absolute greatness on the television for these past couple weeks here, Steph, and I have one thing to say. Tell me all about it. Connor Bedard. Ever heard the name? I have not. All right, hold up one second. Bedard, hey, come on. So last night they're playing in the quarterfinals. This is Team Canada. This is World Juniors. And they're playing against Slovakia. And they go to overtime. They just cannot put in a goal. They're hitting the posts every time. And it just seems like there was a force field around the net keeping everything out. But then you got the wonder child. Connor Bedard. Connor Bedard. He's a Regina Pat. He plays in the Junior League over in Regina. Bless his heart. Regina is a great place. It produces a lot of <laughs> incredible people. Wow. Um, he's from Vancouver, but he's playing in Regina, so let's just bypass that. Regina grew him to who he is today, and now he's just breaking records. So he scored the overtime winner last night, and we all loved it. Oh, congrats, Connor Bedard. Yeah, yeah. Now yeah. we have we have some record breaking stuff with this goal as well because he's now Canada's all time goal leader with 15 in World Juniors in the history of it. Wow! Go, Connor, go! He's Canada's all-time points leader with 32 points. Yeah, Bedard! Yeah! And Canada's single tournament points leader with 19, and he's only 17 years old. Okay, I have a question. Yeah. So we have Connor McDavid. Yeah. Now we have Connor Bedard. Yeah. Are you going to call Connor Bedard Connie as well, or do we need to come up with a new uh, nickname? Uh, Betsy, for him? I think. I think he's Betsy. Betsy. Yeah. Betsy. Yeah. We. I think we got to know. There's only one Connie, and that's uh, McDavid for me. So I think he he has to be Betsy. But um, my red hot ducks. Yeah. Who actually aren't all that red hot? They're quite opposite right now <laughs> this year. They're pretty cold. They're freezing. In fact, oh, they God. should fly so, south for the winter. Yes. Yes. Stay in Anaheim. <laughs> Just stay warm there. <laughs> Uh, they're not doing so hot in the NHL right now, and so they're going to have a really good draft pick. 
and they might just end up with Betsy because oh. Betsy doesn't have an NHL team yet. He's not, he hasn't been drafted yet, right. but this is his draft year. <gasps> he could end up being an Anaheim Duck, and that's um, all I'm going to say is that Betsy might be on the Ducks, and we might be going to the Stanley Cup next year. That's all I'm going to say. Everything. <laughs> right? there's, a, there's a plan for everything. <laughs> it is the season of traditions um, at my house, superstitions. <laughs> superstitions? <laughs> yeah, my mom, my entire life about New Year's Eve, she would always at midnight after you get your New Year's kiss, she would run to the back door, open it up, run to the front door, <laughs> open that up, and let the old year out and the new year in. Fun. That's that neat. Was kind of her thing, and it was like, this has to happen. Just pass on through. Yep. <laughs> Bring in the new air. Yeah, but the people say, like, if you don't get a New Year's kiss, like, you have to kiss the one that you really want to because you are solidifying their affections for the entire year. Who's they? Who says that? Wow, it's, that's deep. It's another superstition. I but thought it was just like a thing to do. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not. It's not. It's a thing. Uh, also, stock your cupboards. They say empty cupboards at the turn of the year foretell a year of poverty. Well, you could have told everyone this before New Year's. Thanks, Steph. I know. I feel like I failed because the other one is that you're supposed to make sure to put your right foot down on the ground when you step out of bed on New Year's Day morning. Um, otherwise, you're stepping into the year on a bad foot. <laughs> on your left. Wow. So for everyone that's left footed, they're just, <laughs> they're shaming them. It's left footed a thing. Yeah. For like soccer, if you kick the ball with your left or right foot. Oh, okay. Okay. I'm left handed, but I don't usually put my hand on the ground first thing in the morning. Okay. Okay. Yeah. 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 You got any New Year's Eve traditions, superstitions? <laughs> I don't know about superstitions, but traditions definitely just watch some college football. You watch TV on New Year's Eve? What do you mean? Everyone does. Like, you have the ball drop on in the background. But no, you you're... have college football on in the background. <laughs> Why have a ball drop when you could have college <laughs> The playoff goes every New Year's Eve ever since they switched over to it. So for like the past 10 plus years, New Year's Eve is college football playoff. And this year did not disappoint because the two games that we had were absolutely phenomenal, Steph. And you just watched it all evening long. Does it end specifically yeah, so, at midnight? Yeah. Or is there a, something that you could say, this is New Year's Eve, apart <laughs> no, from being like, I'm no, watching another football game? Like, it essentially takes day. up the whole day. So like starts, The whole day? <laughs> so it starts at like, uh, you know, 10 a.m. You got one bowl game. And then the, the, the playoff starts at 2. And that goes to 6. And then from 6 to about 10, you have the second playoff game. And then from like 10.30 to midnight, you can kind of just mosey back into bed and... No. And, and wait for the New Year's to happen. Maybe you don't even make it. We'll see. I don't know. Depends on how crazy you got since 10 in the morning from watching college football. You are breaking my heart, and I'm sad that I didn't share all these traditions because <laughs> uh, I'm very worried about your new 2023 year. I don't I mean, I even stepped out of bed on my left foot, so I'm, I'm <laughs> and my cupboards were bare, so I'm, I don't, I'm not looking forward to 2023, apparently. And you apparently. didn't kiss anyone at midnight, so no affection for uh, you either. <sighs> I went for a walk on the Aboriginal Interpretive Trail yesterday, which is that beautiful trail down by mm. Mac Island where there are the foxes and the different statues on it. And you can just kind of stop and take a look and, and kind of wonder at how beautiful the artists have painted these foxes. Yeah, up and down the bush by the river right there. You just kind of zigzag your whole way through and there's a, there's a lot of them. Yeah, yeah, really cool. And uh, I was walking along and there was this gent there with a snow brush. Mm. And he had been walking like quite hand in hand with us and I was like why is that guy carrying a <laughs> snow brush like this whole walk and then doesn't he just stop and start giving a little brush off to each one of the foxes <laughs> right <laughs> that's so sweet yeah I was like thank you so much my friend is visiting from Toronto it was at, I was just going to point out like oh yeah in the summer like these look really great but no this guy went along ahead and brushed off all of them so I could be like look how beautiful this artist painted these and thank you so much to gentlemen who was walking ahead of us no kidding do you think he was he old older do you think he was retired no he was totally all right wow okay good for him I was gonna say like sometimes retired people just need something to do and that sounds like the perfect task for someone but I mean all props to this person I know can I give you actually a little secret Sure. It was my husband. Oh. <laughs> he was like, I'm going to bring the snow brush with us. I thought he was crazy, <laughs> but I just need to give him a shout out because I was really amazed and it was so nice to see the fox. <laughs> so now he has to regularly do that now that you've publicly stated it. He's the, the brush off guy. The brush off guy. <laughs> Want more of today's show? Download the Mixed Mornings and More podcast. Now available every weekday.